So MediaTakers had a kind of an up and down relationship with flagship processors. At one point, it really only focused on mid-range processors. However, that did change with the launch of the Dimensity 9000 range. And if you take, for example, the Dimensity 9300, 9300, that with its uh, all big core design. It had four Cortex-X4 cores, four Cortex-A720 cores, Mali GPU, which including ray tracing. It had various improvements in uh, camera and connectivity. So it was widely received in some markets as a good processor for flagship devices. And now MediaTek has launched its latest processor in the 9000 range. This is the 9400, of course, the successor to the 9300. And in this video, I want to tell you all about the 9400 and what we can expect. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so the Dimensity 9400, 9400, the new processor from MediaTek. Here is a block diagram. There's lots of information on this slide. So we're going to stay on here a little bit and let's just go through it. Let's start with the diagram here on the right hand side. We can see for the CPU here, we've got an octa-core setup, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We've got a Cortex-X925 here as the primary core with two megabytes of L2 cache. Now I've got a video here on this channel about the Cortex-X925 if you aren't familiar with that chip. It's basically the Cortex-X5, but they did a renaming, so it's now the 925. Then for the uh, kind of the middle cores, which are really still performance cores, because this is an all, all big core uh, setup, you've got three X4 cores. So last year we had four X4 cores, this year we've got one Cortex X925 and then three X4 cores. And then for what would be the little cores, but in fact they are still themselves big cores, you've got the Cortex A720 the same as uh, last time, so not upgraded there. And so that's the octa-core setup. 12 megabytes of L3 cache, 10 megabytes of system cache. So they've improved the caches a lot on this. We'll talk more about that in a moment. On the GPU side, you've got the Immortalis G925, X925. Notice so it's the same generation. That's the latest Immortalis uh, GPU. And interestingly, it's got the same number of cores as the previous one, which is a good thing because generally these GPUs get better each year. And so the manufacturer tend to reduce the number of cores by, and actually they still got the same or better performance, but this year they've kept the same number of cores, means the performance uh, goes up. LPDDR5X uh, RAM, the neural engine, and then connectivity and the display, uh, the image signal processor, uh, and so on. Now, what does it say down the left here? We've got the uh, TSMC 3 nanometer process here. 29.1 billion transistors, actually, in fact, 28% more than immensity uh, 9300, and a lot of that's going to be in the increase in the cache sizes. As I said, this is the second generation of all big core uh, architectures. You've now got the X925, I said 12 core, uh, the latest generation of their NPU, and then the modem and so on, which we'll go to on in a minute. So that's the general overview of what we're getting. So when you first look at that, you might say, oh, that's the same CPU as last year, just they've changed one core and they've upgraded the GPU. Yes, that's true, but it's a bit more nuanced than that. So let's just look at that octa-core again here. So second generation, all big core architectures. There's no 520s uh, in here, for example, for the power efficiency cores. So you've got this latest uh, X925, then you've got three X4 cores, four A720 uh, cores. But the point is here, they're all running much faster because they've gone to that new process node. Then the frequency of the uh, X925 is 11% higher than the frequency of the prime core that was the X4, the X4 prime core in the 9300. And then the remaining X4 cores are running at 15% higher clock speed. And the 720s are actually running at 19% higher clock speed. So big clock speed increases across the board. And the result of the improvements in the IPC, that's instructions per cycle. So that's how much the processor can do uh, each clock cycle, so it doesn't matter what the clock cycle is, if it was just given one clock cycle, because that doesn't happen, how much could it do? And in fact, we're running now at 3.62 gigahertz. So it's 15% faster at the same clock speed, and then it's actually running at a higher clock speed. So the overall is you're getting a 35% 
faster single threaded performance compared to the Dimensity 9300 and 28% faster sustained multi-thread performance. Interesting, they've got the word sustained in there. So that's before any possible peaks that you might get at the beginning. And then on the second and third run, it dips down about a bit. We will, of course, test that when we get some actual phones uh, in our hands. And so here are MediaTek's results. These are not independently verified. These are not from devices we have in hand. However, these are claiming 35% better as I just said, for single core, 28% better for multi-core. Now, if I then plot that on some of my graphs, some of the data I've got, let's have a look at single core, first of all. So here is that 3,055 that they're mentioning. That's much faster than the 2,264 for the previous uh, generation. And as we can see here, kind of uh, much better than the Snapdragon uh, 8G3 and 8G2. Two, so that's what you'd expect, of course. Now, of course, we've got the Snapdragon 8 Gen 4, if that's what it ends up being called, uh, coming soon. But the other one, of course, is the Apple uh, A18 Pro, still faster in its single threaded performance. And we'll talk more about that in just a moment. But interestingly, MediaTek are claiming that the Dimensity 9400 is faster in the multi-core score at 9,600 compared to 8,149. And that is, of course, reasonable because Dimensity is an octa-core, whereas the Apple is a hexa-core. So that's an interesting uh, number. Now, when we go here, we can look here at the single core score per gigahertz. So the important thing to remember here is that the iPhone is running, or the latest one, is running at just over 4 gigahertz, whereas the MediaTek is running at 3.62 gigahertz. Now, if you work out what speed you get per gigahertz, actually you'll find that the X925 has actually got a better IPC than the A18 Pro, if they were running at the same clock speed. Of course, they're not. So that's hypothetical, but it, it is it is interesting. And then here are the other numbers for the other ones, particularly here, the uh, Dimensity 9300. Again, the 9300 number and the 9400 number come from MediaTek, not from me. Okay, so when we get to the GPU, as I said, 12 core Immortalis G925, you've got PC level uh, ray tracing, then a bunch of other gaming technology, which are really important, like the super resolution and the adaptive uh, gaming technology and so on. Overall, 41% faster peak, peak performance, 40% faster ray tracing, 44% better power savings. And these are all compared to the Dimensity 9300. So the fact they've stuck with the 12 core while upgrading the GPU means that is quite a significant GPU upgrade. And here are some numbers again to emphasize these are from MediaTek, not from our independent testing. So you've got here the Aztec ruins running in Vulcan. Uh, you've got frames per second here. This is in 1440p. Okay, so we go up from 99 to 130 with a new chip. And again, with Manhattan running in full HD from 344 to 375. So significant uh, performance improvements there for the GPU. Quick look at other things. The camera, full range HDR, zoom for video recording and uh, video capture and so on. Basically, the key things to take away here are 8K60 decode, including AV1. 8K30 encode, but that's 10-bit encode. Uh, not AV1, but uh, H.265 and H.264. But you've got 8K 68-bit H.265 uh, encoding, and it supports triple fold displays here. So maybe that's coming uh, in the future. Uh, we've seen one of those at least already. So the, the uh, camera and display can cope with all of that. And then, of course, uh, AI, the latest generation of their NPU, most importantly, focusing on... Uh, how quick you can run a large language model locally on the, the uh, device. 80% faster LLM prompt performance, they're saying here, with 35% more power efficiency and two times uh, image generation, diffusion generation performance. Again, all of these are compared to the Dimensity 9300 numbers as given by MediaTek. Connectivity, it's a 5G device. You've got a uh, sub six, of course, seven gigabits per second. Uh, there is apparently microwave support. We'll talk more about that in a moment. And you've got Wi-Fi 7. Uh, Wi-Fi 7 with tri-band concurrency there. So the latest in Wi-Fi and kind of what you'd expect for 5G. 
So availability, Oppo and Vivo will launch devices with this chip now in October. So that's pretty significant because they are coming out several weeks. You could even say a few months before the devices we're going to see with Snapdragon uh, processes in them when they get announced. Uh, and now these often just get announced and launched in China. So we'll have to see what the international release schedule is for these. They will be in released internationally, but this is surely going to be, uh, first of all, for China. Now, the first phones will be sub-6 only. However, the Dimensity 9400 does support millimeter wave when that is appropriate for the relevant market. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Love to hear from you in the comments. What do you think about the Dimensity 9400? Is that what you expected? Would you be tempted to get a phone with that chip in it? Do let me know in the comments below. If you like these kind of videos, I invite you to stick around by subscribing to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.